Hello to whoever or whomever may be watching this. I'd imagine you're here for a variety of reasons, but regardless, here you are, and I'd just like to say I really don't know what I'm doing, so let's all hope that this video turns out at least just okay. My lack in confidence in myself aside, I want to mention a few things before I begin the actual subject of this video. One, cape and parahuman are two bits of terminology used within this story to identify people with powers. Two, within the story, the main organizations that use this power classifying system are the PRT, which stands for Parahuman Response Team, and the Protectorate. At this given time, you don't really need to know what those two organizations are specifically. Just know that these are the two main bodies that I could say, or you could say, police parahumans within the story. I need to stop saying within the story so much. Anyway, let's begin. It's important to realize that this is not a power level rating system, and even though within the story, for a variety of reasons, it may be used in such a manner, it's not supposed to be. It's supposed to be a threat level rating system. And what that means is when the power is assessed, it's number rating is assessed on its ability to well threaten civilians and underground personnel while also factoring in potential collateral damage and the potential after effects slash side effects a power may have and due to this there are certain details that aren't inherently factored in when rating the power such as how competent the user is the environment of engagement the additional uses of power can have and the general raw power of an ability among many other factors however like i said for a variety of reasons whether it be bureaucracy practicality pr or some other influencing force how a power is rated doesn't tend to disregard those finer details because of those aforementioned reasons that distinction aside let's talk about the system and how it's organized like i mentioned before powers are rated on the threat level based system that's what those numbers that I mentioned were. And it goes from 1 to 15 plus, generally. And those numbers are attributed to one of 12 categories that Perryman slash their powers are placed into. And as one can imagine, when this system first started, there were many categories. But as countermeasures became more generally applicable, the categories condensed down to the 12 we know at the beginning of the story. Which I'll list right now. We got movers, which have powers relating to enhanced mobility. We have shakers, who have powers with an area of effect. We have brutes, which have powers relating to enhanced strength and or durability. We have breakers, which change themselves into another state of being. We have masters, who generally control people or creatures. We have tinkers, which can create such modified devices and objects with technology far surpassing current times. We have blasters, which have range-based powers. We have thinkers, which have powers related to gathering information. We have strikers, which have melee and touch-based powers. We have changers, which can modify their form and or appearance. We have trumps, which can manipulate powers, which can mean a whole slew of things. Be it modifying, granting, strengthening, weakening, nullifying, you get the idea. And we have strangers which have powers suited for infiltration and stealth. Each category is broadly defined enough to cater to the variability of powers, but not too much to the point that a single category bleeds too much into the quote-unquote jurisdiction of another. However, it's not uncommon for parahumans to display multiple powers, and it's also not too uncommon for a power's nature to be a hybrid of more than one category or for a power to have a sub rating due to a side effect or potential use of a power. As a small aside though, I want to mention that tinkers tend to have a specialty that their tech gravitates around and depending on that specialty as one can imagine the variety in what they create or how they modify things may well vary considering how one person can perhaps have a specialty towards maybe bombs or vehicles while another has especially towards efficiency or maybe modularity. You can see how both of those 
specialties can change drastically on what they would actually make or modify. No, regardless of their specialty, it's important to remember the tinker is only ever really restricted by a lack of resources, creativity, and time. Moving on from that slight tangent, I'm just going to show you the screen grabs for the various countermeasures the purity has for a given threat level, mostly for the sake of brevity because it's a lot of reading, and more specifically because it doesn't really matter too much that you need to know this when reading the story. It's just an interesting thing to think about in the back of your mind. Because from what I recall, these countermeasures aren't really seen applied within the story itself. At least from what I can remember about it, it has been a little bit of time. But you can pause if you really care that much. Though no, I will say that these are the more generalized countermeasures and for each given category there's a slightly more specialized version. Well, that's it and if I missed some important details or gave some particularly egregious misinformation, I guess I'll make an addendum video if this one is that horrendous. Because goodness knows, I already said, I don't really know what I'm doing. Uh, yeah. Bye. Ta-ta. Hmm.